on Luke chapter 5, verse 1. Luke chapter 5, in verse 1. And remember, we're talking about going farther against all odds. Going farther against all odds. Luke chapter 5, verse 1. So, let me say this. Faith does not exempt us from hard or challenging times. What true faith does is this. True faith is proven in difficult times. And when there are difficult times, true faith is, comes out stronger. See, you cannot trust faith that is not tested. Let me say that again. You cannot trust faith that is not tested. If you believe in the power of prayer until there's a need for prayer, your belief in the power of prayer is not tested, we can trust it. If you think your God is powerful and your God can do significant things, such things are not tested until the situation comes up where such things happen. So faith does not say God will exempt us from challenging times. Faith says that in challenging times, we will come out stronger. The true test of faith is in difficult situations. So Luke chapter 5, Luke chapter 5 verse 1, the Bible, let's read this story. So let me give the background of the story. So in this story, Jesus was going to speak to certain people. And for some reason, this fisherman had had a very bad day. It wasn't their fault. They had fished and they didn't catch anything. Imagine fishing all night and you caught nothing. Not that they caught small. They caught absolutely nothing. That is very discouraging, especially if you have business fishing business do you have negotiated that after my fishing trip this is going to happen that's going to happen you know all that will happen the bible says that so they cut nothing so jesus christ was trying to get the attention say can i use your boat to teach the word of god and he said go ahead and have a few days and as he finished teaching he said well thank you for letting me use your boat can i say thank you in kind and it's okay you can say that and you know what the amazing that happened when he said that he says let down your net for a catch and they let down their nets, and they caught multitudes of fishes, and that led to the story of the conversion of one of the famous apostles called Peter. So, what the first thing I want to say is, is let's read it. Let, let's just back, 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 you know, let's just back up a little and read it. The Bible says in Luke 5, verse 1, And it came to pass, as people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Genesaret, and two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them, and they were washing their nets, the Bible says they were washing their nets. And, you know, the first thing I want to say is this. How come people can fish? Because, you know, I'm talking about going farther against all odds. In this story, Simon Peter, his brother and his friends, they had had a very terrible night. They had fished all night and they caught nothing. It wasn't their fault. They had done what they know to do, but they caught nothing. Why is it that sometimes life just goes negative? Sometimes it's just because we live in an imperfect world. It's not really your fault sometimes. It's just where you are. The current situation, there is nothing you personally did to contribute to it. It's just that you are existing in this world at this time in an imperfect world. Sometimes evil happens in this world and life goes south because of the world is imperfect, because of people, also because of demon spirits. And let me say something to you. This is the response you need to have. I can determine some things that happen to me, but I can respond or I can choose the way I want to respond to what happens to me. So I can determine that a virus epidemic will happen. I can determine that there will be devaluation. I can determine that there will be a lockdown of the economy. I can determine that they will close the stores. But what I can determine is my response to what is happening. The question I'm asking you today is this. If you can determine your response, what response are you giving out? And let me say this quickly. Your response can be negative and your response can be not positive. Let me give you some wrong responses that people have when things go wrong. Number one, I want to see this. When things go wrong, some people become frustrated and very bitter. When things go wrong, some people become frustrated and they become very bitter. So they stay at home, they're angry with their child, they're angry with their wife, they keep to themselves, they're deeply frustrated and they become bitter. This is what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12. The Bible says you should, become, you should be careful of bitterness because bitterness has a way of opening you up to further danger. So when things go wrong, 
I know things can be very annoying, but frustration and bitterness does not take you out of it. The, the second wrong thing people can do is this. When things go wrong, people become depressed and they give up. Some people have set huge goals for this 2020. They look at the first quarter, quarter ending and they become so depressed and they become so depressed. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says the righteous man falls seven times and he gets up. Hey, if a righteous man, even if you stumble, there's grace to get up. There's grace to get up. When things go wrong, some people become frustrated and, and, be, and bitter. Some people become depressed and they just give up. The third thing is this. When things go wrong, people also become selfish and they begin to complain. You know, that's wonderful. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10. This is very instructive for all of us actually. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Because you want to ask yourself that, hey, am I becoming frustrated? Am I becoming bitter? You know, I'm having to stay at home. I can work on my business. I, I want to work on it. I can work on my career the way I want to work on it. Am I might becoming depressed? Am I giving up on my goals? And these are wrong responses when things go wrong. But all the people also become extremely, extremely bitter. All the people also become extremely selfish. First Corinthians 10 verse 10. The Bible says, Neither murmur as some of them murmured, and they were destroyed of the destroyer. See what the Bible says. When things went wrong as they migrated from Egypt into, into the promised land, some people just became, just became to murmur. They just became selfish. The fourth thing that happened, the fourth response that goes wrong is this. When people, when things go wrong, people become fearful and they make very poor decisions. People become very fearful and they make poor decisions. And this is what you need to do. You must be careful that you don't allow fear to get a hold of you. Someone says, why? Because fear is the doorway for Satan to get in. Once fear has a hold of you, Satan has a hold of you. Because fear is of the devil. You know what the Bible says here? The Bible says, perfect love casts out fear. And I want to really believe God for this. Because when things happen, you cannot control the things that happen to you. But you can control the response to the things that happen to you. Why am I saying that to you? The reason is this. You can't control the fact that you had a divorce. Someone chose to leave you. You can't control the fact that for one month, your business was shut down by the government. That you don't have control over that. You can't control right now that the payment you're expecting is put on a hold. You can't control the fact that right now, your employment contract is put on a hold. But what you can determine is the way you respond to it. Are you going to respond out of bitterness? Are you going to respond out of hopelessness? Or you're going to respond out of faith? Or you're going to respond out of a place of joy? Remember, it's useless to try to control things you have no control over. What you should do is to focus yourself on what you have control over. Let me give you some examples of people that had right response. Number one, Isaac. Isaac had the right response. The Bible says, just like right now, there's recession. There's a global recession. In Isaac's time, the Bible said there was a famine. There was a recession. And you know what the Bible says? And the Bible says, and Isaac sold in the land the same year and reaped a hundredfold. What does that mean? Isaac was willing to try again. Listen to me. As we go through this phase of life, be willing to dream again. Be willing to try again. Be willing to believe what God said to you again. The Lord said, this is our your vision and expansion. And you're wondering, how would this happen? Almost half of the year is gone. Be willing to try again. The Bible says, and Isaac sold in the same land a hundredfold. Do you think about it? If there was a recession, that means that there must have been some kind of drop. If Isaac sold all he had in the land, he could have lost his capital. If it didn't happen, if there was no growth. But Isaac tried again. Maybe you are home and right now the way you are home, your marital problem is now magnified because the two of you are in a space together. And you're like, I'm so tired of this. Only try again. Try and do what? Forgive your partner. Try and do what? Show some more love. Only try again. The second thing is, that the second person is, is, is David. David came back from a battle and the Bible says that it was a Ziklag and they are taking the whole of his family away. But guess what the Bible says? The Bible says, and David encouraged himself in the Lord. I'm talking about people that, you know, had the right response during a tough time. The question is this. Are you encouraging yourself in the Lord or you have been tough on yourself and you have been critical on yourself? The question I want to ask you is this. Is there something you can personally do to change what is happening? Probably not. Bible says, and David encouraged himself in the Lord. Hallelujah. Encourage yourself. 
Look at your wife and say things will get better. Call your boyfriend and say, it's going to get better. Bible says, say unto the righteous, it shall be well with you. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Hallelujah. A, th a third example was Abraham. The Bible says Abraham was waiting for a child. Now he was 100 years old. He's of him to be grumbling and murmuring and saying, what will it happen? I thought God promised me this. I thought God promised me that. Because murmuring and complaining, complaining gets you nothing. What did Abraham do? The Bible said Abraham was strong in faith, giving glory to God. He was strong in faith. What does that mean? You get up this morning, you get up tomorrow morning and say, Father, I thank you because you're in charge. And I love the song that's going around, that he's got the whole world in his hands. Listen to me. Satan does not have the whole world in his hands. No matter how Satan thinks he's powerful, no matter the things you are reading, God has the whole world in his hands. God is still in control. He's still the God of the universe. And let me tell you something. Oh, over and over and over again, Satan has tried to thwart his plan, but ultimately God's plan does not fail because even Satan knows that. He got the whole world in his hands. You're wondering, how will I pay this bill? Will I still be able to make school? How will I take care of my kids that are in London? I have kids in the US and you're bothering and wondering, but he got the whole world in his hands. And this is what I say. This is why I believe in prayer. When we pray, we touch the hand that moves the world. Hallelujah. So if I can touch the hand that moves the world, I can change things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. If I can touch the hand that changed the world, I can move things. Somebody say praise the Lord. And the last thing is this. The last person is this. Example of right responsibility. Examples of right responses in trouble. The last person is this. The three Hebrew boys. You know what they said? Huh? They said to Nebuchadnezzar, he said, we will not bow down to the golden image. He said, if you want to burn us, go ahead and burn us. My God. What, what response is that? The response is that my faith does not cave in because there's trouble. Hallelujah. <laughs> my faith does not cave in because there's trouble. Hey, if because you've not seen a certain result, your faith caves in, that's weak faith. If because you've not seen a certain response, your faith is trouble, that's weak faith. The three Hebrew children say, he says, he says, our God is able to deliver us, but you know, but but not but, but, but this breaking news, even if it doesn't deliver us, we are not afraid to burn. Look at the response. What response is that? No matter how it turns out for me, my faith in God is consistent. My faith is God is not based on things. My faith is not, not based on outcome. My trust is God is in his person. I trust him because I know him. I trust him because I love him. He's not based on outcome. He's not based on a job. He's not based on the money. He's not based on money. He's not based on the marriage. He's based on him. You know what I'm saying? So we're living in a culture where people's faith is based on things. And God says, no, put your faith in me. Don't put your faith in an outcome. So someone says, thank you so much. I'm so encouraged about this. Yeah, thank you. But how can I go further in crisis? I just showed you an example of people that went further in crisis. Isaac in that same land had a miracle. I believe that this can be your best year so far. I know that, you know, this year has been challenging for some of you. But guess what? The biggest opportunity comes out of the biggest challenges. Hallelujah. The biggest opportunities come out of the biggest challenges. The biggest breakthrough are after the biggest downtimes. Hallelujah. The biggest opportunity come out of the biggest challenges. The biggest miracles is after the biggest tests. And guess what? The same way this year has been so challenging, so will your miracle. It will be so magnified. Say amen if you believe it. So someone says, okay, I believe it. What can I do? So let's learn from Luke chapter 5. So they had gone through a stressful moment. Peter had gone through a stressful moment. I could imagine as a fisherman. I don't know what he did, but for the whole night he fished and caught nothing. All of a sudden, what did he do? The first thing was this. So, how do I become stronger and faster in crisis? The first thing is this. You know, refuse to be defined by difficult situations. What does that mean? Refuse to be defined by difficult situations or season. Don't change because things are difficult. You know, I've seen people that are going through a marriage and it's a difficult marriage. And this lovely lady or this lovely man, all of a sudden he changes because things became difficult. Listen. Don't change because things become difficult. You keep giving life situation. You know what I'm saying? So right now, some of you are listening to me and you've just gone through a lot this period. And it's almost changing you. Don't change. 
I love the way Mike Murdoch would say it. He says, never let a tragedy change your theology. Because when people go through a tough time, they become vulnerable and they begin to accept details, data that does not correlate to what they know. But because they are, not vul because they are vulnerable, they are not able to process it the way they have to process it. How do I know that Peter did not change? This is how I know. Imagine having spent eight hours fishing and cut nothing. All of a sudden, <laughs> all of a sudden, Jesus Christ comes in and says, can I use your boat? If, if you were the one, just imagine that the first thing you go to the office, someone walks to you and says, can I get a loan from you? You'll be like, are you an idiot? But Peter did not allow his problem to define him. Don't go around acting it out on your kids and taking it out on your, on, on your employees. Let's believe. Don't let your problem define you. The second thing is this. This is how you're going to come out stronger. This is how you're going to come out stronger. Number two. So the first one is this. I refuse. So this is what you have to do. I refuse to be defined by difficult seasons of my life. Why? Because I need to come and, come and go. The second thing is this. I give my attention to Jesus and respond positively to him. Bible says, and Jesus came to Peter. And say, can I use your boat? Question. In the midst of all of this, does Jesus have your attention or CNN has your attention? In the midst of all of this, what is Jesus saying to you? In the midst of all of this, does Jesus have a word that is trying to release to you, but you are so distracted, you are not able to see? Peter, the secret of Peter, you know, because what happened to Peter was this. He had gone through a season of, dark, of, of darkness, a season of, of famine, but Peter had a miracle of acceleration. What does that mean? What should have taken maybe four or five nights to catch? Everything shrinked up into one night. And that is what I'm believing God for you. That what you lost in May, March, what you lost in May, what you lost in February, what you lost in January, it's going to come as a bumper harvest. If you believe, say amen. Someone said, did that happen before? Read the story. The Bible says when Peter eventually caught the fish, what happened? The nets began to break. It was so big that he couldn't handle on his own. He had to call his friends to come and help him to handle it. But how did he do this? Number one, he had the attention of Jesus. Are you so overwhelmed with the situation that you're not able to pray? Are you so overwhelmed with the situation that you're not able to get time God's word? Listen to me. Whoever has your attention controls your life. During this period, God is trying to get... And, and someone say, how do I come out stronger? Hey, go to the Word. Make sure that every day you spend some time in the Word. Someone say, how do you know? Because faith coming by hearing and hearing about the Word of God. As you take in the Word of God, the Word of God beats you up. This is the way Paul says it. Paul says in Acts, he says, I commend you unto God and to the Word of His grace, which is able to build you up. The Word is a builder. As you hear the Word of God, hope is being built up in you. As you hear the Word of God, faith is being built up in you. As you hear the word of God, joy is being built up in you. As you hear the word of God, peace is being fortified in you. Hey, all you need to do is to hear the word of God. You've been hearing BBC for such a long time. You've been hearing your neighbors for such a long time. It's time to hear the word of God. The word of God has the power to impact into your life. The word of God has the power to bring change into your life. The word of God has the power to pull you out of depression. Praise God. The word of God has the power to pull you out of the peace of life and put you on the pedestal of joy and peace. If you believe, say amen. The word of God has that power. But the thing is this. Hey, can God get your attention? And that's what I want to say. Let's see, every morning, every morning on Instagram, I'm leading prayers by 6 a.m. I want to invite you to join me. Just follow on Instagram. So I said, why, why are you doing that? Because I'm hoping that, I'm hoping that God can get your attention. Listen to me. When God has your attention, oh my God, all you need is one word from God. It will change your life forever. 
Lazarus just need to hear Lazarus come forth and there was a miracle hallelujah all you need is just one word from God and your fear will disappear all you need is one word from the God and the sickness will go all you need is one word from God and your concerns will dissolve all you need is one word from God and your worries will paralyze all you need is one word from God and joy will stay up in your spirit like the rivers of water it's just one word from God this is what the word of the Bible says. He said, he sent his word to heal them. He says, no word from God goes and return back empty. He does something powerful. He does something life-changing. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. How do I become strong and go faster? Number two, I give my attention to Jesus. Give your attention to Jesus. Every day. Don't let a day go without some time in praying. Don't let the day go without some time in, in, in the Bible study. The first thing is this, how do I give my attention to Jesus? By offering what I have to Jesus. See, all Peter had was a failed fishing career. See, the thing is this, maybe you are planning too much by yourself. You're saying, once this is over, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, this is how I'm going to save my marriage, this is what I'm going to do with my kids, this is what I'm going to do with my job, this is what I'm going to do with my health. And God is saying, hey, I can help you. Listen, I know you're very smart, but God can help you. Peter said, all I have is a boat. It's obvious I'm not a great fisherman because I got no fish. But Jesus, come and use my boat. See, God is not the person you can hide from. You can hide your marital problems from your friends and your pastor and your colleagues at work. Even your parents may not know. But God sees it. God sees the fact that though you live in that great house, you're broke. God sees the addictions you suffer from nicotine and the addiction to suffer. And he sees all those things. God sees the addictions you have. And he wants to help you. But the thing you have to do is this. You have to be humble enough to be able to say, I can't. I can't. I can't do this by myself. I need you. See, let me tell you something. People claim, people claim they are self-made. People say, I'm a self-made man. I'm a self-made woman. That is an exaggeration. There is nobody that is self-made. There is nobody that is self-made. You know why? If you cannot buy the air you breathe, if you don't own the brain that you have, if you don't own the intelligence that you have, if you didn't plan your own life and think of your life as a concept, you're not self-made. And God is wanting you to just be humble and say, come and help me, Lord. Glory to God. Today I'm asking you, Maybe you're here and it's a long time you watch your Christian program. It's time you're connected with God. God is calling on you today. Come. Invite me into your life. Peter, and some of you, you're just ashamed because you've not lived at par. Some of you right now, you're afraid. You're like, is it the end of the world? You've just, you're just scared. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. He will make the difference. Somebody say hallelujah. The fourth thing. So how do you go stronger and faster in crisis is this. I offer what I have to Jesus. Is it marriage that is failing? I offer it to Jesus. Some ladies, your heart is so broken because of what people have done to you. I offer the broken heart to Jesus. Some of you are carrying pain of things that happened in the past. I offer my pain to Jesus. Some of you are carrying fear that what will happen, what will happen right now, what will happen, my life is going to break down, I have bills, what will happen? I offer my fears to Jesus. Peter says, I have a boat that cannot help me. I have a boat that cannot help my career. If it, see, if my boat cannot help me, can I offer it to the creator? Maybe he can fix it. And he can. And he can. And he can. You know, one time, one of, our, one of my friends was struggling with smoking. And he began to pray and say, Lord, I don't want to smoke again. And this is what happens when God wants to interfere in your life. And he told me this himself. He said, 
One morning, I woke up to go and buy sickness at 7 a.m. And this is how when God begins to just interfere with your life. He said, when I bought the cigarette, I was heading home. He said, and a madman saw me just buying a cigarette. This is a stark madman, naked, and he was smoking. He looked at me and said, you are a madman. 7 a.m. in the morning, you are smoking. You are a madman. He said, all of a sudden, it just dawned on me that I'm really sick. How can I be smoking at 7 a.m.? He said, I dropped the stick, and that was the last day of it. God knows how to fix things like that. And let me say something to you. God can make masterpiece, masterpiece design of every pain or loss. Some of you feel like, see, this year is already a bad year. It's a write-off year. 2019 was way better. Don't conclude so soon because you don't know what is going to happen after now. If you met Peter when he finished fishing, you'll have said it's a bad night. But God knows how to turn around bad night into great mornings. Hallelujah. That's what the Bible says. It says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. If you had met Peter when he just finished fishing, hey, what did he catch? Nothing. My God, what a horrible night. But wait, two hours after, that same nothing turned into boats full of fishes. My God is powerful before you give up on 2020 before you give up on your dreams before you give up on your marriage before you give up on your business before you give up on your country before you give up on your life before you give up remember god has the power to make master design pieces hell not just ordinary design masterpiece design out of losses out of pain out of shame he did it with samuel he did it with samson he did it with Peter, he will do it also with you. Why? He's not a respecter of person. All you have to do is to trust him. I know marriages that were terrible and God turned around. I know people that were suicidal and depressed and God turned them around. I know people that were broken out and God changed their story. David was a little boy. Even his father did not think he was significant. They put him at the backside of the desert. But God brought him from the backside of the desert and put him among the princes to stay. Don't give up on life. Don't give up on yourself don't let the current situation break down your heart the bible says that weeping may endure for a night he said but joy cometh in the morning i believe that the brighter days are ahead of you i believe that joy is ahead of you i believe that peace is ahead of you i believe that prospects are ahead of you i believe that the rest of this year will be way better than what you have ever experienced before in the name of jesus christ the worst is not going to happen the best will happen hallelujah the warfare over your life by Satan has been cancelled. Angels have come to your rescue. God has preserved and protected you in the name of Jesus. Someone says, how do I go farther and faster? Jesus said to him, he said, Peter, cast your nets for a draft. And Peter said, you're a great speaker, I can talk. But I'm a professional fisherman. I've walked all night and got nothing. Oh, I catch something right now. He said, but just because I respect you, I will let out my net for a catch. Why am I saying this to you? And as soon as he let down his net, there was a miracle. Sometimes your intelligence does not allow you to follow God. Because sometimes God says things that are not illogical. They are just too high for your intelligence to comprehend. Because he functions at a dimension that is way out of our frequency. Why am I saying this to you? If you want to see the hand of God and go forward faster, I will go forward faster by following what Jesus said. So the question is this, this season, have you heard God? I know you've heard your wife. I know you've read the Guardian. I know you've heard what the president had to say. I know you've heard what international news has to say, but have you heard God? <laughs> because all that man has to say will fail. Only what God says will last forever. It says, once I've not spoken and twice have I heard the voice that the power belongs to the Lord. He says the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any church just said, Hebrews 4.12. He said, no word from God will come back to him empty. Have you heard God? 
And if you have heard God, what is, listen, the Bible definition is of wisdom is hearing God and doing what God says. First Corinthians 2. That's the Bible definition of wisdom. How do I go forward faster? Jesus told Peter, he said, let down your nets. What is God telling you today to do? You know, different things. For some of you, it's asking you to lend and help to somebody else. Some of you, is asking to re-strategize. Some of you, is asking to spend some time in prayer. Some of you, is asking to just love again. Some of you, is asking to believe again. Some of you, even in this season of recession, he's challenging you to just give again and support with your finances. The question is this. Are you that smart that you cannot hear Jesus? Or are you that wise? You know when to lay down your own wisdom and say there's no one as wise as God and begin to follow him? Peter said, it doesn't make sense for me to be throwing out the nets right now. Nevertheless, at your word, what is God putting in your heart that is so difficult for you to do? Nevertheless, at your word. Listen to me. It's not the hearers of the word that justify. It's the doers of the word that justify. Maybe it's time to just make peace with your husband. Maybe it's time to just release that person and believe God for the best. Someone say hallelujah. Someone says, what do I need to do to go further faster? The next thing is this. I will let go of my fears and opinions and step out in faith again. That's what I'm going to. I'm going to let go of my fears, let go of my opinions, and step out in faith. I know what they're saying. I know what I'm thinking. But hey, I'm going to walk by the word of God. And that's what I want to invite you. See, send, send, your, de- send your details. Register for a Bible class at this season. Register for HSTC. Register for the membership class. Because during this season, you can build your spiritual might. You can build spiritual depth. Don't waste the season. You can build spiritual depth. God is calling to spiritual depth. God is calling to a season of power, of prayer. God wants to disciple you in the season. But where does it start from? It starts from you saying that, Lord, my opinion, I lay down. My opinion, I lay down. And I want to lean on your opinion. And the last thing is this. What do you have to know to go further faster? As long as Jesus is in my boat, my future is bright and secure. Hallelujah. Did you hear that? As long as, see, as long as Jesus is in my marriage, my future is bright and secure. As long as Jesus is my career, it's not going to terminate in 2020. As long as Jesus is in my business, it's not going to be over. The reason why is that Jesus gives life. Hallelujah. Everybody expect that business to die. But whatever is given to Jesus does not die. Psalm 121 says, He that watches over Israel, neither sleep nor slumber. He said, The Lord is your keeper. Hallelujah. Once the Lord is in it, it will not die. Once the Lord is in it, it will not die. Psalm 1, oh glory, Psalm 23. Let me read this to you and I will close right now. Oh glory to God. Psalm 23. This is good. Psalm 23. Mm. This is what Psalm 23 says. I, I could just read it from, from, from my heart. He says this. He says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I don't, do you know what we're going through right now? It's a very difficult season. It seems as if we're going through the valley of the shadow of death. So you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I don't know if it's your business I'm talking about, if it's your career I'm talking about, if it's your marriage I'm talking about. He said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He says, I will fear no evil. And he didn't say, see, he, he says, I will fear no evil because the things I'm seeing should make me fear. There are things, there are financial projections I'm seeing that should make me fear. There are things I'm seeing in my health that should make me fear. The the doctor's report should make me fear. What the doctor says should make me afraid because they say that my lost sperm count is over. My sperm count is over. That my old moms can't have a child. I can't have babies because of the eggs. They say because of what they said. I am said we cannot make money. He said though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil based on what NCDC is saying. Based on what WHO is saying. It seems to be over for everyone. He said though I walk Walk to the valley of the shadow of the dead. I said, I will not fear evil. I should fear by the things I hear. I should fear by the things.
things I see. I should fear by the things I touch. But the reason I do not fear is this. He says, this is the reason I don't fear. He said, because thou art with me. He said, I run. If you have a Bible, grab your Bible. Hold it close to your chest. He said, thou art with me. He said, I run. And the staff, they comfort me. It doesn't matter who is against you. He, the one that owns the universe, the God of gods and the King of kings, the Lord of lords is with you. He doesn't matter because you'll come out successful on the other side. All you want to know is that he's here with you. Hallelujah. Can I pray with you today? Hallelujah. Let's pray. If you're not born again, let's start from there. Say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I heard the message. It was just for me. I believe that Jesus died for me. He was raised from the death of my justification. I've been far. But today, I confess and receive him as Lord in Jesus' name. If you're feeling fearful, you feel depressed and suicidal, stretch forth your hands towards me. I want to command the fear to go away. I rebuke the fear in the name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke the suicidal thought in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you, it will not turn out worse, it will turn out better. That the thought of hope will stir up your heart in Jesus' mighty name. I pray for people that are going through a tough time right now because of lack of finances, that you will have a miracle by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. <laughs>